Hi, this is Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about taking photographs for performance events for online showing. Now you could use a more conventional model for the actual events you want, or you can try to use a model that is not conventional to fit in a spot. And in this case, I'm going to try to turn this horse into a roper. Go online and look in for the look for the rules. Uh, just go on Google, in this case, tie down roping rules or whatever, and go into the rules and understand what you are about to do. So for example, uh, in calf roping, the calf must be free before the horse breaks the uh, string in front of it, uh, things that they have to wear, the tack, all that stuff. You need to understand that before setting up your event. One of the things I wanted to double check in is wearing chaps. Now my doll has a set of chinks on it, which are the short chaps. And what I wanted to make sure is if I could use them. But when I'm looking at all the ropers, they don't wear chaps because they actually get in the way when you jump off and tie. So I'm going to remove the chinks off my cowboy. Then what you have to do is get all the tack on your horse and get him ready. Now, in this case, uh, I'm using the dots and the sticky wax, but at this point it's not fully set up. It's just getting it started because he's going to be moving him around still. So I want to make sure everything's in the right place. The rope is running through his belt loop. It's gone through here and it's back to his hand. A couple of wraps in his left hand. He has a rein loop and he's holding the rope ready to throw. Then I'm going to determine where I'm going to have it. And this is going to be an indoor shot because I want the background here. So I've got my background. I have this piece set up as the back for uh, reference and for the advertising and for the look. This is the rope that will be broken by the horse and it can't be broken until the calf is fully clear of this. I have somebody manning the booth here, uh, the calf chute, because somebody always has to keep an eye on the calf. And this piece is just holding everything up. It will not be in the photograph. So I've just got it prepped somewhat ready. So now I'm gonna bring the horse and plunk him in here and see what I can do because this horse is not a roper. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is place him probably where I want him, get everybody in gear. So he has just broke the rope. He is going to need to be more forward now if he's gonna capture that. And I need to take a lower angle on him to make it look like that horse is moving faster. So if you only see the one leg, he could be moving a little quicker. So I'm trying my best to turn this into a roping model. So I'm gonna move him around and move the cowboy around until I have him in a position that looks like he's trying to capture that calf. Then what I do is take photo after photo and I move little things to try to get stuff in the position that I want them. Um, make sure his hands in the, on the rope on the correct way. Now I have actually roped before, so I, I know how to do that. But if you do not, make sure you look at it, watch it, watch videos. And he is trying to capture, so he is going to be looking at, all his body must be an effort towards this guy right here. And again, the horse can't be that far ahead he has only broken through moments ago because this calf has just got out. So take a lot of photos. And then once you have them in the position you want, then you're gonna go check little things. And in every photo, you're gonna take a photo and then expand it. Look closely, is the bit in the right place? Are the boots coming off? Is, is the girth in the right place? Make sure everything is where it is. Make a little adjustment and take another photo. Expand it, look at it, do it again and again until you're happy that everything is where it should be. Another thing you may want to do when you have an option is I have that uh, camera on lens one. If I change it in lens two, it allows me more background. And if I change it to lens three, it actually allows me a wider area of background, the way that the camera works. And you can use that to your advantage to get more background into your photo. Another little fun option you have is you can take some cotton, this is just stuff from the drugstore, and rub it in some eyeshadow. 
to make it brown. Then you can add that cotton behind legs of the horse, or in this case, the calf, to add a little bit that looks like it's just kicking up some dust. So let's say you wanna change where your horse is looking. I have taken a tiny little piece of white paper there. Now I dampened that paper and stuck it to the top of his eye, and now it looks like he's looking down a little bit, just to give him a change in direction. So after moving him around a lot, I think I've decided where I want him. I'm trying to make sure I get all the little details in place before I actually take the photo. So I was having a little problem with the lighting, so there's my husband holding up a blanket behind me to get rid of the light so that now the picture hasn't got that background glare. So generally I find I take at least 20, if not 50 photographs for one piece. And every time I stop, I crop and look at them, I check everything. And I'll just have a little checklist going here. And once I have everything right, and make sure it's all cropped, then I'm good to go. Another option here is I could have actually taken this down to the beach and dug a little hole and put his butt lower to make it look like he was up like this coming out of the hole. And that would have taken some work in the beach, but it's way too windy out right now. So I'm not gonna do that on video, but that is a possibility. So you gotta think about all the things you can do to get a model in the position that he's not naturally in to get the photo that you would like. And another thing you may find frustrating at first is what you see in real life sitting here is not how the photo actually looks. So moving things around really helps to get the actual photo because in a real roping, this would be further apart and he may be sitting a little different, but it has to look right when the photograph is done. For outdoor photos, you can find any sort of area and turn it into a good spot for your piece. For example, I'm looking for a piece in a valley, so I can see stuff like this that definitely doesn't look model horse related. But if you clean it out, you can find areas that take really good photos in very unusual places. Now in this case, I would have preferred some light, but it's not a good light day. But if you do, you can play with shadows and all sorts of fun stuff. And I may come back and work on this photo again later. And thanks for joining me. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And I would love to see your photos in my Facebook group. Please feel free to post them there and check out these videos.